Damn. Oh, what's good, bro? What's up, man? Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, bet I had to go outside in the car, man. The kids, man, I ain't want them being all loud. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. You know, I, I got bet. four I got three year old. He'd be all on the podcast with me, man. <laughs> Trying to get these questions answered. That's what he's there for. Oh, yeah, you already know, man. What's good with you, man? Everything good, man. Everything good. I'm here in uh, Seattle now. Yeah, I mean, where I live. Okay, okay. Uh, Stand inside. Man, to, uh, I was about to say, man, how bad is it down there, man? It's bad. It's bad okay. up here. I mean, they put us on quarantine uh, until May 4th oh, or wow. something like that. Yeah, yeah. man. It's hard, man. Because um, we've been on, at first it was a two week thing. Yeah. Now it's all the way until the beginning. Uh, I want to say May 1st. Okay. So, yeah, man, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard, man, but you got to do what you got to do, man. Got to do what you got to do. You got to make sure everybody just got to listen for two weeks, man. But hey, come nobody on, man. Listen. You know you know where I'm from. It's hard for Detroit people to listen about staying in the house, dog. Facts. Facts, <laughs> man. Facts. You don't want to stay in the house. It's 62 degrees today. You already know. Everybody trying to be outside, bro. Oh, if this is if this is 10 years ago, Bella would be slapping. Dog, for <laughs> real. For real, man. Hey, man, for before we, uh, we start with everything, man, we usually do a – um. A thing I, I want on some positive stuff, man. Salute me while I'm here, man. So what I usually do is I try to salute people who not the ordinary people, you know, like your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Yeah. You know, just somebody who wouldn't uh expect it or whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh like, huh? You mean like who wouldn't expect uh the like, salute? Like you know how sometimes we wait for people to pass away, be like, oh man, Dante was this or or Brandon was that, but we wait until it's too late to tell your homeboys or somebody how you felt about them. So ah. I, try, I try to do it beforehand. Matter of fact, a couple episodes I did one for uh for you, dog. I, I shout you out, just basically saying big up on you know what I'm saying me knowing where you come from and stuff like that, and knowing your yeah. situation and everything. And then you know what I'm saying you having a successful career as far as basketball, something I know you love. Yeah. So that was my shout out to you. And then like I said, you know how we be young, be like, dang, we don't come back to the city this, that, and the third. Yeah, yeah. But once I move and I can't bet, like, dog, I see why, like, I see, <laughs> dog, like. I'm yeah, here, nothing there. and people don't even know I'm here, and I'm here. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Here, you know, I don't stay too far out of Detroit. I'm like in Southfield, Farmington area, but okay. You once you get older, you start to understand. You had kids like dog, like it's more than just Detroit. Even though we both love our city, it's more than just Detroit, though. You feel me? That's true. It's more to it's more to Michigan too, man. You know, because we stayed around in the, in the circus and stuff like that when we was on the east side, going from here to there, and we yeah. like, man, I want to go to I want to go to Southfield. I heard it was so nice oh, out there. For real, like, man. I can't wait to go to Ann Arbor, or and, I can't wait to go here or there. But it's so the sad much more. thing. The sad thing, dog. People don't even leave they they neighborhood, so they don't know nothing besides they hood. You feel me? Because they're comfortable where they at. Man, yeah, for real, man. fast. And that's one of my big uh, initiatives. That's why I logged on here with you with, uh, with my Bull Body Project. One of my big initiatives is uh, Get Uncomfortable. Yeah. Back when we was growing up on the east side on East Warren, bro, it was uh, – I was comfortable with being and one, playing street ball and shit like that. Yeah. But but I had – like, my, my, my thing was I had to get uncomfortable. I didn't want to leave the city. You know what yeah. I mean? But I had to. I had to go pursue a dream. Oh, yeah. Once I left the city – for my dream, I realized that I don't need to go back because there's other stuff out here in the world. That's when it helped yeah. me progress to get to where I need to be. Man, and for real, and the sad thing about me, I ain't leave until God rest my mom's soul. Yesterday was her eight year anniversary being passed, you know, passed away. Moms. Man, for real, yeah. man. I know your moms, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. God rest both their souls, but it took my mom passed away for me to, you know what I'm saying, be all right, let me see how it is outside of Detroit. You feel me? Yeah. I, I'm like, I got nothing to lose. My, my brother going to college, I got me and my son. True. My other brother is standing the offer, so I'm like, let me see how how it is to leave Detroit. I mean, the three or four years away, it helped. I came back here with a whole different mindset, bro. True. And you you probably just look back like, man, ain't nothing moving in the city. Everything is going to be complacent. Everything is going to be the same. But once mm -hmm. you break that mentality, like, yo, like, people don't people don't need Detroit, but they're just comfortable with, with where they at. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you know how I grew up. We grew up the same way, pretty much. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was fresh out of foster care, moved over there, man. And um, you, Weez. Reds, except me with open arms, came our little click and stuff like that. Oh. Guys, man, like, I need to do this basketball stuff. Like, I hope everybody understand. Like, yeah. it's, it, right, it, but, I, I, but my thing is, I didn't owe nobody no explanation of why I left. Because, really? you know what I mean? And that's what people got to understand. You don't owe nobody anything when you leave somewhere because you're doing it for your life. Oh, yeah. You know what sure. I mean? And that's yeah, exactly man. what everybody's doing. So, yeah, man. But we're going to get to that part. But uh, who, 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 you, who you want to shout out? Who you want to salute, man? Somebody. Who I want to shout out. Um, I want to shout out to everybody, man, who's who, who's struggling right now, who's going through some type of anything. 
Yeah, okay. man, I want to shout them out, man. No matter where you at in life, you definitely want to get up to where you need to be. You just gotta focus and just, 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 and just, and just hit it hard. Yeah, and that's one of the main things. But I shout out my little brother and, and, okay. and, and uh, Deontay, who's doing oh, yeah, this thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, little he rapper. He moved, yeah, he moved out of the city too. He moved down to Florida now with no man, turn to looking good. back. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. so he uh, he's down in Florida right now doing his thing. But I want to give a shout out to him, man, because he's gonna make it. I got a feeling he's gonna make it. Oh yeah, for sure, man. That's all, man. Like I said, when sometimes we gotta take a negative, like it could be a parent passing, it could be anything. Like we gotta take that as a positive. I always, yeah. Like, whenever I do anything, dog, I always think about damn. My mom worked her ass off. You feel me? Going to work on the True. Board, you know what I'm saying? Single parent. So if she passed away, she passed away. I can't feel her. You know, everything she taught me and instilled in me, I got to make sure I keep that going. So she, yeah. you know what I'm saying, can be like, okay, well, I left, but I left both my kids doing a hell of a job, you know what I'm saying, on my behalf. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. She ain't, she ain't raised no slackers either. I mean, we, girl, your, your mom used to be on my ass. <laughs> boy, for real. <laughs> for real. No, she was a yeah. thug, boy. I be telling people yeah, like, man. man, no games played at all, man. For, for real, real, for real. Man, but it, all right, let's that, that, take us to that, man. Like, I know – um. My first time moving on um on Cooper, you stay around the corner on Pennsylvania. And like, dog, I was so excited to see a basketball court near my yeah. house. Like, so I walked up to the court and I see this dude, this tall dude with this with this uh with I don't know if you had ponytail braids. I don't know what it was, my best. It could have been dude, either or Everybody, you probably was one of them who thought Malcolm was my friend. He's my little brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, dog, I walk up to the court, and I'm like, dog, this court packed. Like, everybody up here. So, I'm seeing this one dude, man, flying all over the place, dunking, got handles and stuff. I'm like, dog, who is this dude? So, then that's when, you know what I'm saying, we started chopping it up. you like, I'm going to Southeastern. I'm like, sure, I don't know about going to SC. I'm going to King. Like, that was my yeah. whole thing. I'm going to King till they had, like, you got to be on the waiting list or something. So, like, that whole summer, I remember uh, telling my mom, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I met a couple of homies and stuff. They're going to come through. I think, like, the yeah. next day, you and Weez came through, though. Like, yeah. Just, just just talk about, like, us meeting and then, like, just being at Crowley, like, how Crowley I mean, was everything. Crowley was, like, like, I don't even know how to explain <laughs> it, man. Crowley was unreal. I think Crowley will always go down in history as one of, like, the best basketball courts on the east side. Bro. And if you go to that court, you knew who you knew who I was or you knew who somebody else was that was over there at that court. Real. But I think just growing up on the east side in general, I think basketball was like an outlet for us. You, you was excited when you seen the court. I was wrong. I was excited when I first moved over there and I seen the court. Like, man, this shit lit. I never stayed, I never stayed that close to a court, dog. Never. That, hey, that's, that, it was lit. It was man. lit. But, man. um, yeah, man, so, like, meeting you, Weez, and Reg at that time, man, was definitely good for me because I needed somebody to connect with. I had a, I had a few friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but it was just, like, we became so close so quick yeah, yeah. that it was one of those things where, like, shit, we needed that. We was, like, the sand lot, but a basketball, <laughs> the basketball right. court. You know hey, what I mean? those, those two years felt like goddamn 10, dog. Like, yeah. man. And Real I remember, man, too. Like, dog, like, on some real stuff, I used to tell people, like, dog, like, you was the probably, to me, was the coldest at Crowley. It was probably one person that was neck and neck with you, dog. I, don't, I, I think you agree with me, with Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Lof, yeah. remember Lof? Remember oh, yeah, Lof, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. But Jonas yeah. had, like, Jonas could play Jonas down low. It. Jonas yeah. could be a point guard. Like, yeah. like they had it all, dog. Like, y'all two was going, like, to me, if I had to, all right, y'all starting five at Crowley. This is my starting five, if I had to choose. Yeah. I had I had you, probably you probably be like a three or whatever. I have um I had Jonas. Okay. I, I probably put I got put BT in there. Got to put BT in there for the as my up. point guard dog. I don't know if I want to put J Mo or I want to put Randy. <laughs> I might do J Mo because J Mo got that high IQ as far as like just yeah you got to go J Mo. And then as shooting guard I got to put what's his name uh Kurt. Yeah, of course he didn't miss. Kurt had clip boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he who, did. Who, who be your five from Crowley? I man? think I, I think I agree with you on that right there. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Those, yo. I see. Uh, I see Malcolm talking about me. Mal, you was eight years old at the time. <laughs> Damn, you was so small with them big braids in your head, boy. Duh, he was bald. <laughs> yeah, dog. Like, and then once I get on the court, man, like I tell my kids now, nah, man, that's why it's funny that you hooping and I'm coaching. I remember yeah. my mom saying, like, Rashad, you should be a coach. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm thinking she trying to play me like a yeah. coach. I'm hooping like. So I know you'd be a good coach because, like, dog, I used to watch basketball all day long. Definitely. Like, dog, and then, like I say, I, I, if I knew what I knew now, Malcolm, I think 
all of us probably be way better than what we was if we actually worked out. We were just going to the court hoping. Of course, that was it. That was our workout. That was our cardio. We weren't yeah. doing push up, no sit up, no nothing like that. Like we weren't trying. We were just out there for fun, pretty much. Man, for real. So and yeah, when, up, you know? it's crazy that I'm coaching now because like, like man, when I won my championship for most people, my middle school team is nothing. But to me, that was everything because the first thing I thought about was like just being at Crowley, man, hooping with y'all. You feel me? Yeah. And it's like, dog, like, step at any level is good, though. Man, so. like, that's that's why this year messed me up with this Corona stuff because this is my first year doing the AAU stuff, man. Yeah. And then I, I yeah. had my son playing. My son, my son destroyed me at him at thirteen, and me at thirteen. <laughs> he yes. way better than me, dog. <laughs> he, he bigger. He can he can shoot for real. Like, dang, I'm, yeah. I'm a ass compared to him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what's up, though, man. But you took what you knew and you uh you taught it to him, so. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. That's why I don't allow my kids. Like, you know, I put up thirty points. Like, no, I was that person. I was that person. You could put on the team. I'll be a good glue piece for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I do my Definitely. thing. I I throw you up off the glass real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of those at Crowley. <laughs> man, man. But uh, we we your old name, man. Before you was Bull and stuff with the Glow Trotters, man. You was N One, man. Of course. Like, who was the Who was the person that gave you a name N One? Because I didn't know you was Will for about a month. Slim, uh, so Slim, remember Slim? Mm -hmm. Yo, he used to be, uh, he used to be at the court. And be like, yo, who is this kid, man? With all these and one skills, these and one moves and stuff like that, really? man. Like my name, Will. They they call me Bullard, man, or they call me uh, Bull. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's whatever. He like, nah, we calling you and one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, that was your name, dog. That was it. Everybody called me and one. Nobody, they called me nothing else, man. Man, nothing. Like I say, I didn't know your name. I know your whole government. I ain't gonna put it out here, but yeah. I didn't know your jump for a while, though. I just knew you as N one, dog. That's it. And like, dog, you was like, that's what I was thinking about when I saw you on um your um your homeboy podcast last week. Yeah. And um how you said that you didn't play for no organized basketball team. And that's why I believe like you probably one of the best in SC because dog, just imagine if you was in the gym working out instead of being on yeah. the court. From freshman year all the way up to senior year, yeah. Dog, like your game would have been like dog. <laughs> yeah. Way above everybody. Cause just yeah, off yeah, of, I agree. You could watch moves and just dog, you was watching moves and just doing them. Easy. Yeah, of course. Deontay just got on here. Oh, what up, what up, Deontay? What up, Tay? Uh, yeah, so yeah, dog. So if you were actually putting that work, dog, man, I mean you you your game is up there, but just imagine like just imagine like like me with the podcast, you with this stuff, like if you start oh, early, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's yeah. my thing, man. With my son, I tell him, my like, dog, if you got something like he can draw real good, get on it. Basketball ain't everything. Get on it. True. You know what I'm saying? You can make a lot. You can be a tattoo artist or something like that if it comes to it in the future. You know what I mean? They make hella money. So. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah. I'm going to see if you remember this, man. Speaking of N one, do you remember me, you, and Malcolm walking to Belle Isle, dog, to, to uh, go see the but, uh, Yeah, I do. I remember that. Dog, yeah. my cousin yeah. worked for N one. He's like, we down here. Come down. Yeah, dog, we that was a nice walk, dog. It was. We walked from. We walked from. We walked, but it it was a nice walk, but it wasn't that far because we didn't live too too far. Yeah, like we had. A, if we had a wheel, we would have got there in like five ten minutes. But it was it was it was it wasn't bad. But that shit was a hype. Man, across that bridge and everything. I'm thinking like we be, being young. I'm like, yeah, they gonna pick you out the crowd. You gonna go in that boy and gonna be with hot sauce in them, dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, right. man. So uh, as far as just uh, hooping and stuff like that, man, like I know we used to go to uh, when the winter time come, we'd go to the, to a brewer, we'd go to um, Salvation, to yeah, yeah, just hooping, you know, all around and stuff like that. Like, when, in your mind, when did you be like, man, I wanna, I wanna be for real hooping on a basketball team, man, just take it serious and you know. Man, I was so I was so comfortable and so collected with what I was doing on a, in, in the street ball stuff. I really didn't take basketball serious until um probably my first year at Mary Grove or probably that summer leading up to my first year at Mary Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I met DJ and when I uh met the, uh Coach Judd from Mary Grove and stuff like that. That was probably my first time ever thinking like I need to take this serious because I yeah. feel like I got a future in it. Yeah. Like I understand like like we would go to basketball course on the east side and just run them. Yeah. Like, if it was a crawler we go to uh we go to the sale, we run the sale, the brewer we play in there. Yeah. Uh, we go up on Grasher, the Rosa Park, oh, yeah, play yeah. out there. Yeah, with them, you know I mean? them, so, them thick rounds, boy. Yeah, yeah, facts. Man. But I, I say my probably my freshman year at Maryville, man, I was just like, you know what? I could do something with this. Yeah. Because everybody telling me I'm nice. I know I'm nice, but I need to know I need to know how to play organized basketball. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I picked, I picked it up quick. It, was, it probably took me like a month or two to pick it up. I mean, and uh, shit, from, from street ball to All-American my first year, I can't complain. Man, for real, man, for real. Cause I remember – um. We had both tried out uh, uh, for um, Southeastern, dog. Maybe we had to yeah. run, run all around, run the hills. 
Yeah. And I remember uh yeah. God rest his soul, man, Coach Stevenson, man. Okay. He had he hyped my head up, bro. He like, man, you did good today. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm be on the team. <laughs> man, I remember I went back home like, mom, I'm making the team. Like this is my first year at Southeastern. Like I'm making. It. I'm like, yeah. All right. I knew who the dudes was. Like you know, Rayshawn was that dude. Tone. Yeah. BJ. You know BJ. Walt Waters. Yeah. And then yeah. so I'm like, I go back home. I'm like yeah, Coach Stevenson said I did good. You feel me? I'm like, probably yeah. me and Will on the team for sure. So then uh, go back, look at that paper. No Sterling, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all don't know it. I went in that crowd, in that bathroom and cried, boy. Damn. I was boy, cry my ass off, like, damn, because I never got cut before until then. Yeah. Again, that next year when you left, I tried out again, me and Weezy. We made the first cut. So okay. the second cut, they're like, we're going to check grades. I'm looking at Weezy like, I might get a job, bro. Because, <laughs> 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 dog, I was, man, I was playing around at SC, man. <laughs> I was playing around, man. <laughs> if it wasn't for those two years at Gross Point North, though, I wouldn't have graduated. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, how, see, would, hey. how would your um your GPA, like, as far as your grades when you was at Southeastern, man, just high school overall? Like, I know you bouncing around from, you know, different schools and stuff. Like, how did that mess yeah. with, your, with your grades and stuff? I, I think it messed with it a lot. You know what I mean? Me going yeah. from foster home to foster home, from uh, then getting out of foster care, transitioning into my, what, ninth, tenth grade year. Mm -hmm. Um, My grades was probably trash, bro. Going sure. to going to Southeastern, it probably was trash. But then leading up to my senior year playing, I had it. I probably had to go like a two point five or something like that. Man, um, but prior to that, nah, probably like point eight, probably point one point oh. I skipped. I skipped class the majority of my uh my, my uh sophomore year. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I had went to Central. I was skipping classes. Skipping. I was going to Votech. I think I go to the Votech bus. Walk home. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't playing, or I go to the court for real. That yeah. was it, man. Man, y'all messed me up at Southeastern because, you know, I went to a suburban school the first two years. So yeah. I go to Southeastern, I'm seeing all these black girls. I'm like, dog. Yeah. And then, like, I'm just, like, not caring. I'm, like, just skipping and stuff. Like, I think that <laughs> that first year at Southeastern, dog, because the thing that helped me with SC is I knew I knew y'all from the hood because that was the summer of 2002. Yeah. So I knew y'all from the hood. I knew uh, Tom Hickabalkin because I just knew him from hooping it, um, in middle school. I knew who. Okay. Lil, I knew Lil Walt. I knew B. Dennis because he stayed in my neighborhood. Yeah. So I'm like, it was easy. Then I started seeing these girls like, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a rap for me on that point just alone, dog. Yeah. It was a rap, man. So like your uh your senior year, man, you know what I'm saying? I know um after you graduated, you was working at um at the store right there on Parkway, Parkway store. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Right, right. You you me and Reggie had worked there like a year before. That grocery store down on Jefferson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, like, yeah. I ain't know that you wasn't even like after your senior year. You wasn't even really thinking about school for real. I wasn't I, after my senior uh, at uh, South Beach because I only played like maybe like five games at SC, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I'm just play street ball. Get this job at this grocery store. They yeah, they yeah. pay me two fifty a week. I might as well <laughs> do it. You know I mean, nice money back then. I was balling. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real, two fifty a week. So I was like, yo, I ain't, I ain't about to do this. But then playing basketball outside, went up to that Rosa Parks court one day with DJ. Well, I went up there and I met DJ up there, and he was like, yo, you should come try for Mary Grove College. Well, before you keep going, DJ, he um he like a point guard, dark skin, right? Yeah, Dennis no, Foster. Yeah. Hold on, real quick, yeah. real quick, dog. Be watching this. He don't. I know he don't know me from from. Any, he don't know me at all. But it was one time yeah. he made me want to punch him in the jaw, dog. <laughs> I'm at basketball. You talk city. to him. You talking, right? No, no. It, he was lighting my ass up. I'm like, yeah. I was in basketball city. I'm like 20 years old. And this dog, he could do it. He was doing it all. I'm like. Everything, fam. He made me want I'm like, dog, I'm about to quick. I'm going to punch this dude. <laughs> yeah. DJ, DJ, like when it comes to small guards, he probably did one of the top two or three in the city. Ever, he, could shoot, ever seen he, could, he could shoot and he could dribble. Yeah. So I've seen like, him about 50 and yeah. 60. So I'm like, hey, man, so, hey, switch, yeah. switch. Get him, man. <laughs> But yeah, go For ahead. Real? He took you to Rosa yeah, Parks. Yeah, so I, I was. Uh, it was just that um, I was at playing at Rosa Parks, then going back to the crib on Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, just going back and forth to those two. And DJ was like, "Yeah, I want you to come try out for Mary Grove basketball team." Yeah, college. I'm like, "Man, all right, cool." Yeah. So I went up there, tried out for the basketball team, get, got connected with the coach, okay. uh, Coach Judd, and he was like, "Yeah, we can, we can, um, we can bring you in. Like, you would definitely be a good piece for us." Then I got <laughs> met Coach Sickerman, and he was like, "Yeah, but yeah, well, we don't got no scholarships here." Yeah. I'm like, "That's cool." Yeah. I take out loan, take out loan after loan after loan, mm -hmm. and then um, went back to my job. I was like, yo, um, I'm gonna have to quit because I'm going to school in August. They was like, what? Yeah, we'll give, we'll give you another raise. Like you got to stay here. Like y'all want me to go to college? Like what's wrong with y'all? That's, that's crazy. Funny. That's funny. For real, man. Yeah, because you uh, wasn't wasn't that's when you met um. I remember you brought him to the court, man. 
he gave gave our buckets to a, a Lafayette, the little guard who had yeah, yeah, Lass, yeah. That's when I met Lafayette. I met Tex. Yeah, yeah. I, that, yeah, I knew stuff. him just from the YMCA. I'm like, he, he, he you look at him like uh, he he gonna work you though because you know he got yeah. burnt. It didn't get to a fight when he was young or something. Yeah, real young. Real yeah, young. yeah. But yeah, you yeah. looking like you know what I'm saying whatever. But he'll light you up, boy. But facts, facts. So I met, we, it's just like, man, I went to Mary Grove. I had to sit out my first year too at Mary Grove, but I got yeah. to know everybody, still got to practice with the team and stuff like that. Okay. Just getting the shots, man. And then I had my first year, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I told my coach, like, man, I'm, I'm trying to go somewhere else now. Yeah. Another stepping stone. So I just went to Richland College down in Dallas, man, and yeah. killed yeah. it down there. Cause that's when you, then that's when from there you went to uh, Corporate Christie, right? Yeah, Corpus Christi, yeah, for two yeah. years, yeah. yeah. How how did you like it down there in um, Texas, man? Cause I love Texas. They show you love, man, for real. Like, I love Facts. I love Texas. If I'm, if if uh, me and my girl now wasn't planning on moving to uh, San Diego probably by the end of the year, then I yeah. definitely would consider Texas, probably like a Houston or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or even a, a Austin or a San Antonio. I heard Austin, nice like, I heard Austin is real nice, man. My, my, I got family in Houston, and then, of course, I got family in Dallas where I was at. Yeah, I heard Austin was real nice. Malcolm stayed in Austin for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And San Diego, nice too, though. My cousin, I, I visit um San Diego. My cousin stayed in San Diego too. Okay, that's yeah. where I had. That's where we had the college dunk contest. That was in San uh, San Antonio. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, when um when you went to Cor Corporate Christie, dog, like, was the NBA on your mind, or just like at, like during that time, or was it like you know I'm just gonna hoop this and then be over with? I was hooping. I was just hooping. I wasn't thinking about the NBA because I knew when I came in at Corpus Christi that I wasn't um, – I said overseas was, like, my main thing. Yeah. Like, getting overseas and then probably working my way to the league. But yeah. when I uh, got to Corpus Christi, I'm like, man, okay, I'm down here. But I'm playing behind seven seniors. So, I know he's going to uh, yeah. try to get these guys somewhere, overseas league or something like that. We had one NBA recruit, Chris Daniels. Yeah. Tough. He could play the one through five, seven-footer. Okay. Dang. off the ball. <laughs> Yo, for real, huh? Chris. Yo, Chris Daniels is nice, yeah. but um, I knew he had to. I knew he had to. Um, I knew he had to get those guys somewhere. So I, I didn't play my junior year at all. I probably played like two or three games. Okay. And then January came. Funny story. January came, and he was like, "Yo, do you want to? Um, uh, do you want to stay? Even though I'm not going to play you for the second half of the season." Yeah. I'm like, man. He like, you can either ride the bench, yeah. or you can go home. So I ended up coming back to Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, after so um halfway through my junior, I ended up coming back to Detroit, okay. enrolling in Mary Grove, and I instantly focused on books, nothing else. Yeah, I was done with basketball. I was like, you know what, forget it, man. I ain't about to, I ain't about to keep going through this these these roller coaster rides and stuff like that. So, okay. summer come, and my homie from down in Corpus Christi was like, "Yo, we need um we need you to come back." And I'm like, "Man, I ain't got no money to get down there. Yeah. I'm broke. I'm in school." He was like, "Don't worry about it. Like, we'll, like we'll take care of you once you get down here." So I told my grandma, "Like, grandma, I need a ticket down to Corpus Christi." So she got me a ticket, flew down, and I stayed with her for like two or three weeks. Yeah. Um, until I could get in school, and I was like, "Man, fuck, I'm gonna go ahead and be a walk on." Got the walk on, man. Senior year went the way it was supposed to go. Rolled the bench a little bit, started a few games, uh, and then got into the dunk contest. Yeah. So. Yeah, man, and, and like that dunk contest, I remember being at the crib, man. I don't know if, if you told me. I think you might have told me or whatever. And I know everybody in the city was just tuned in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, girl, like that, that joint was hype. Just knowing, like, sometimes, man, like, when you just know somebody, like, you be like, damn, I fuck like him on that ride with him, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Us not thinking, we see him dunk contest, like, oh, yeah, he about to go to the next level. Like, he about to be, you know what I'm saying, yeah. for real for real. Yeah, I mean, after that, I got a couple calls. Like, one of my assistant coaches got me a call from a team over in Italy, but they was only offering me, like, 25000 coming out of college. But I'm like, yo, the smartest decision I ever made was, do I take this twenty five thousand right now, or do I take this sixty that the uh, that the Dallas Police Department is offering me? Yeah. Anybody want to take the most money? You know what I mean, yeah. so my thing was, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, sixty after I graduate from the Dallas Police Department and be a police officer in Dallas and be cool yeah. with that, and then get transferred back down to Corpus Christi where where don't no crime happen at because it's on like a little rich little exactly. island. Exactly. Yeah. So you chilling? <laughs> I had I had my plan though. I yeah. had my own perfect plan, but they uh, they say. If you want God to laugh at you, tell him tell him your plan. And that's exactly yeah. what I did. I told him my plan right. and what I wanted to do. And then the Globe Trotters called me. And I was like, you know what? This is a sign that he's sending me telling me to get back into the basketball because you got other things in your life that you want to do. Yeah. So I got with the Globe Trotters, man, and I've just been been rocking ever since. Man, for real, you know man. I mean? Then like I say, um with, with with you and your story, man, I think with everybody who be who be successful in life, man, it's all about your connection, who you make connections with, man. True. And having those relationships. Me and my cousin, he worked for N1. I don't know if you remember, I used to go to uh, Philly. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he worth and one. We was talking about this the other day about like the the best thing in life is having those connections and being able to call people without asking for favors and just building those relationships up. That's true. So a lot of times with those connections, like it got you connected with Mary Grove, with connected with, you know what I'm saying, going down to Dallas and the, probably got you connected with the Glow Trials as well. Yeah. So it's all about that, man, building those relationships and keeping those relationships, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it's about, man. And when I uh when I did get that call from the Glow Trials the first time I hung up on him. Yeah. And then I called and then he called me back, like, no, this is the real deal. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Yeah. You know what I mean, put me up for the interview slash tryout and everything like that. The tryout was crazy. I was the only dunker there. Yeah. It was me. It was me, uh, Tate Fisher from Siena Heights, and it was a uh, little Meach from Detroit. Okay. Um, little a uh, little big head Meach used to be at uh, uh downtown at uh, Bobian. Okay. At, uh, at the police department. At the police department, we used to go down there. Yeah. You know, down there. So, okay. uh, it was us three in there. They was trying not to be dribblers. Yeah. They both ended up getting on, but Firefly came back. Well, Tate Fisher came back the next year, and I was there for that for that year. Yeah. A real experience, man. My first year alone, I think I probably hit 13 countries. Man, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Unreal. Man, yeah. for real. Like, and just like us growing up, like a lot of times, especially in our era growing up, it was all about and one, and one, and one. Like, was, yeah. was you one of those dudes at first before you joined the Globe Trials, like kind of clowning it until you learned the history of it? I mean, no. Nah, like, I didn't know anything about the Globe Trials when I came, like when I first first got on the team. Yeah. Like, it's just I had to learn my history. But it was like Globe Trials. I'm like, okay, that's what's up. That's cool. They do crazy stuff. Like, I, I definitely want to be in a caliber with them. Yeah. But I get on the team and now look at me, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, man, a lot of times you're not even thinking about, like, you about to be doing this for a living as a young, a younger a youngster, but you're doing all these tricks as a youngster. You feel me? Yeah. Like, like yeah. you. Like I said, when people don't understand, like when people say "in one tricks," like they don't understand how how you was with it, dog. Like, oh yeah, but I used to do it in like regular games, just go down, <laughs> pop, 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 and just you know, it was just like second nature to me. Dog, hey, if you would be mad, then a mud about it too. Yeah, boy. you put between legs on a fast break. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, but yeah. I remember you were talking about that dunk too to go back to high school. That was against Crockett, remember? That was against Crockett, y'all. Oh yeah, about? Crockett at uh, okay, at Cobo. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that dunk because, like, as everybody was talking about that, even though then y'all lost, right? We lost, yeah, we but lost. But everybody was talking yeah. about that dunk the next day in school. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember y'all playing against Crockett, dog. Like, and yeah. I didn't know you, um, when you play on the team, you ain't played five games. I didn't know that, dog. I only played, played, yeah, about five games, man. I used to I, come out, sit on the bench. The layup line be crazy. <laughs> then, <laughs> I probably played, like, five games my senior year. And that's why I be telling, like, my son, man, like, um, when he tried out for AU team for the Playmakers like three years ago, he didn't make it. A lot of the kids who already was on the team or had like some connections made it. So I made sure we kept the the, tech, the test message that said like he didn't make the team. Keep that, use yeah. that for motivation. You know what I'm saying? True. So like even if he don't get that much playing time, like so far, every team he played on, he played pretty good. Like um, his middle school team, they don't have a seventh, eighth grade team. They separate. Yeah. So when I tell you his team was trash, like they lost every single game. Yeah, that's Every crazy. Game. But all that's, his friends was quitting because they didn't like the coach this and third. I'm like, man, but he, he stuck it out. And that right there showed a lot of character in him because he could have been like, I'm quitting. We losing too much. True. And then, like, his last game, like, the score was like they lost, like, 30 to thirty to 15. He had all 15 points. So, afterwards, people wow. were like, man, you did good. Even though y'all be in y'all tail kick the whole season, like, you stuck with it. You've been playing good. You're getting better. Right, it's just all about keep going, man. That's what it is. Just take all, take those hits along the ride and just keep going. That's yeah. all you gotta do. And that's why I tell my kids, like you said, like being that good, that good, that good teammate on the bench, man. If you ain't playing, but <laughs> still encouraging those starting those five that's in the game. Facts. Yep, that is. That, that's that's facts, though. Like no matter if you in the game or not, you still gotta be a good team player. Yeah, man. Because when your time come, you are gonna want them to do the same for you whenever exactly. you get in the game. But a lot of times, dog, the reason it be it be the parents, man. I'm learning that a lot. It be the parents yeah. that. that like I've coached games, and I'm hearing parents like, "Put my son in!" Like, come on, yeah. like, come, come, yeah. and I'll be telling, I'll be telling them, come to practice, y'all can come watch and see what your son is not doing in right. practice. Be in the back, like he trash. That's why I'm putting him in. That's what I'm yelling back. He trash. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> man, for real, man. I had man, I had parents so mad, like man. But that's why I had to understand, realize, like my first year coaching, man, I was trying to please the kids. I'm trying to please their parents, and then at that first year, I'm like, you know what, like. I gotta stop caring. Like I gotta play. I gotta sure. play who who come to practice. I gotta play who working hard, and I gotta play to win. Cause at the end of the day, I, it's a job for me too. That's true. That's so, very true. And if you ain't winning, you go get fired. You man. know what I mean? So you gotta do what you gotta do. So man, you say this uh, your twelfth year with the Glow Trials, huh? This is my twelfth year, man. This is my twelfth year, man. Like, and do you look at it like 
like, like, all right, how long can I keep doing this? You know what I'm saying? I know you just getting off an injury right no, now. No, I mean, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't look at it like that. I just look at uh, um, who can I teach that's coming up right now because you never know when I'm going to be done with it, you know? Never know if I get, I, if I get that call, say yes. we're moving in a different direction. But for me, it's just like, I just want to say, I just want to teach the young guys when they come in uh, whatever they need to know to succeed like me. You know, yeah. because a lot of guys don't stick around for this long. Yeah. And for me, I just want to make sure that they're good, make sure they're making the right decisions, no matter if it's financially, yeah. if it's physically, uh, mentally, you never know. So that's my thing is whenever they come in, I try to teach them the right way. So okay. And now when you was – um when you uh, – your first couple of years when you played with the Gold Trials, did you still think, like, this can be something that lead me to maybe playing overseas basketball? I mean, um, my first couple of years, I was up, I lived up here in Seattle uh, my first four years, and I was playing in pro leagues with Jamal Crawford, uh, Nate Robertson, and all them, all the, all the uh, Seattle local guys. I was ever playing in pro, pro leagues with them, averaging 25, 30. So it wasn't a, a question of if I couldn't could go overseas or anything, but it, I was just done. Yeah. I mean, I was tired of that mental frustration. Yeah, and, keep uh, on, you know what I'm saying? It, it was mentally and, draining. Yeah. yeah. I could have I easily been like, yeah, I, I want to give it one more try and then probably – you know, probably yeah. made it, but it was just like it was just me. I was just tired of it. It comes up yeah. point. It comes a time in people's eyes, and we just get tired of certain things. And yeah. then they just, but I was happy playing in the Seattle programs and all that stuff like that. Playing with those pro guys, knowing that I could keep up. Yeah, know, yeah, so. yeah. And then, like, it was, it seemed it like, like you say that, uh, you know, you touched on the foster care and bouncing around. I know you stayed in a lot of neighborhoods and went to a lot of different schools. Yeah. Seemed like with the Gold Trials, the Gold Trials was kind of like your first stamp family. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. You pretty say? much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much it was because I'd be around these guys 12 years now, man, and, like, yeah. some of the guys come and go, but it's still, like, I still got that core group of guys, so I've been around for 12 years consistently. Yeah. You know, I mean, we text every day, text every other day, and stuff like that, man. Yeah. But it's just all about making friendships and keeping that camaraderie between us all. So. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, dog. Okay. Now, this corona stuff, man, this coronavirus, is it uh, – Is it? I know it's messing up the, you know, work life as far as, you know, saying you being on the road and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, but that's like I'm, I'm good. I'm comfortable with where I'm at right now with that. But that's why I'm pushing my, um, my, uh, my boy buddy project, which is my, uh, which yeah, is my I'm, fitness. Yeah, yeah, talk about so, that. I was gonna get on there. Talk about, um, talk about that. How you started that? Yeah, I started that six years ago my, when my daughter was born, man. Because I realized I didn't want to be a globe trotter forever, and I need something to fall back on. For sure. So why not start on my own brand? So I um, got my LLC, uh, boy buddy project, and I just been rocking with it and building it, man, ever since. You know, but like, right now we're doing good. Like we're not like no no uh no Under Armour brand, but we up <laughs> yeah. there. We, we, look, I'm working to get up there. I mean, I need yeah, that hey, take time, that. man. Yeah. Take time and patience for real. Yeah. But my thing is, as long as I get one person out of the house to go get uncomfortable physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. That's 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 rewarding for me. Yeah. Um, I got free workouts that I do out in uh in Delaware where I just lived for eight years. Okay. We have those Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. But right now I got to start pushing out more at home workouts because people can't go outside pretty much. Yeah. They got to yeah. stay away from each other. So yeah. I'm working on that right now, man. My, my uh, my my website is up and running. I got my my gear on there. Um, I'm just doing a lot of stuff with my brand, pretty much. Like right now, I'm working on a few more certifications um, for personal training. So yeah, I'm trying to get it, man. Man, it's funny. Like it. I like I like that saying, man. You gotta get com uncomfortable to get comfortable, right? Got to. You gotta get uncomfortable. And that's, man, that's funny because like I said, man, people don't know. Like I'm like. I don't show it, but I'm like super shy when it comes like doing anything. Like even this shit, like like yeah, I gotta prepare myself. You feel me? Like yeah. being because yeah. I'm used to doing it. You know, saying in studio and stuff. Like before somebody get there, if I don't know them, I'm still a little nervous. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like with the but kids, then, coaching a, a group of kids, like I'm uncomfortable. But then, like all right, let me. You know, saying that take be uncomfortable. Like I said, it make you comfortable. It builds character and all that stuff, man. That's true, man. You got to realize when you're teaching them kids, they're looking at you for for advice. They're looking at you for leadership, you know. Yeah. So you out there like, uh, let's, go, <laughs> let's, go, let's go, let's go this way, kids. <laughs> for real. They're like, shut up. And people, <laughs> we ain't hey, listening dog, to you. Hey, and these kids now, nah, man, they different from when we was kids, man. Like, they Facts, different. Man. They are, I'm Facts. talking about in the worst way. Like, I'm, I'm seeing stuff like kids shouldn't be thinking like this at 12 years old. What they talking about, thinking about, I'm hey. like, man, I was just an imagination in my brain. I wasn't these they doing it. Like <laughs> look, nowadays, look, nowadays kids will cuss you out in person, then they get online and talk about you, put a picture up. Man, like, and that's nothing, man. Dirty. My um my um you follow her on um on um IG and I believe Facebook. Her name is uh Brittany Dorsey. 
Okay. She um she got a thing called In the Know. You might want to take a look at that. That's basically like, kind of like an anti-bullying thing, man. Okay. And like you got to think about bullying when we was young, you would just get roasted. But like you said, they'll post your picture on on social media Facts. and go That's off on you. Unreal. Man. And the comments, the comments be the worst though. The comments be like, man. <laughs> That's where they make their money at. For real, <laughs> man. And I'm like, just imagine like social media, like, like that. You, you, I don't. You, you could get why a kid maybe had a pressure. Be like, you know, I don't want to go to school no more. I don't want to because yeah. they too scared. You know, when we was growing up, you got what we had to watch. What we it was our clothes. Like they check your tag, make sure it's real. <laughs> Facts, of course. That's what it was then. Man. But now, if you ain't got 15 million followers on Instagram, you ain't nobody. For real, you know man. But, and that's a bad thing because, man, you a lot of people will feel like they're a stamp just because of social media, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you're really not, though. Like, it's – it's blue checks ain't all that – what ain't all that dished up to be. I know people who, who be paying for those likes and followers, which is ridiculous. Yeah, that, that's unreal. Yeah, yeah that's unreal. Now, we talking about kids, man. Like, man, you a father, man. Like, I'm a father. Yeah. Like, we were, just, we were just in high school yesterday, man. We got kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, got, she, uh, she turned six yesterday, man. She's uh, – She's a, she's a little she's a little character. I love her. She do gymnastics and stuff like that. But she's her own little unicorn, man. She's in her own world, and I love that. Yeah. As long as she got um, long as long, whatever she want to do in life, I'm gonna support that. Yeah, no matter yeah. what. Now, are no you little, what, are you a little nervous what? having a um a little girl, man? No, not at all. You're gonna be like that dad to on, on Bad Boys too? No, not at all. Yeah. If I tell my daughter one two one two, she know what that means. Yeah, you know, yeah. For that one two punch, that one two punch. <laughs> but, but I teach her. I teach her the right things, though. I ain't go. Yeah. I teach her how to defend herself pretty much, especially nowadays in the world. I teach her not to be so sensitive to certain things on uh, on a computer whenever she get on there. Yeah. Whenever we're talking, I try to be a little hard on her, but then I tell her, like, this might happen at this point in time. Yep. So I teach her I teach her life lessons at a, such a young age, so when she get older, she's like, oh, well, I know how to handle this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, because so. I got – are you thinking about having any more in the future or – Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, of course. Yeah, man, I got – man, I got two boys, man. I got – it's crazy. My son, 13 now, man. That's crazy. Then I got three yeah, year old old teenager over there, bro. That's weird. Cause now <laughs> you gotta start thinking about like all. It's a whole new thing you gotta start thinking about. Like, yeah. Of course, you gotta think about sex because that's coming to kids early now. Yeah. You gotta just you know what I'm saying you gotta put them on game as far as like with him. He was a, a on the road student and stuff. He straight A's, A's and B's and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. one, one report card, you know, not report card, but you know, you could check grades now on your phone. True. But one day I'm just like, let me see your phone. Let me see these grades real quick. And it was like the coat, like two D's and an F. I'm like, I'm looking like, man, I'm about to kill you, bro. <laughs> and I knew what it was but, though. He, girls yeah. he finally starting to like him and he not he not know he don't know how to handle it. I'm yeah, like, listen, I mean, man, like girls are gonna be a problem for the rest of your life. You feel me? So you gotta yeah. know how to be able to adjust to it. Like that's not important right now, right? Right now, it's about the grades, basketball, and your family. That's it. That's true, man. That's true. And then as soon as I said that, I'm like, listen, man, I will, I will go up to the school and, and, and clown on you. Like, <laughs> when I said that, I took away his game for like a week. Back to A's and B's, dog. That's it. Back to A's and B's. So That's I'm on. It. So yeah, man, I, I plan on having one more man because uh, this coronavirus kind of hit at the wrong time, man. I mean, it, it, it's not, it's not right time, but we supposed to be getting married in July, so it's like okay. right now she's kind of like, yeah, hey, thanks. She she's stressing out about like we spent all this money and. And we might not have it. Like, listen, we'd be yeah, okay, yeah. man. It'd be okay, man. Definitely. Y'all would be good. It'd, it'd be back on, on and popping by the end, so. Oh, yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, man, I see um, you in a relationship yourself or whatever. I see that um, she has a podcast, JR Day. I saw a couple of episodes. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to go check that out, man. If you ain't already tuned in, definitely go ahead and uh, watch all of those and listen to all of those. So how is, it, how is it, man, when – um, how long have you guys been together, uh, first of all? Uh, you? Two years. Two years. So, yeah. you know – with this coronavirus, man, I was gonna have like a fun topic about this uh, on some other stuff, but like being in a relationship with somebody and it's being new, and you being uh -huh. trapped up in the house with that person all day, like. <laughs> yeah, we stay busy. I mean, we, we we definitely stay busy. If we ain't doing TikTok videos, we're working on something else. You know, she yeah. got podcast interviews that she do. Um, I'm I'm uh, studying for my tests and things like that. But other than that, we probably chilling, watching TV, playing games. We always doing something. We ain't working out. We always doing something. We keeping ourselves busy. Got to. Yeah. Uh, Got to. She's definitely way more busier person than me, which ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I love it. You know what I mean, yeah. so whenever she want to do something, we do it. Yeah. You know, it just, you just got to do it. Like, y'all be, like, people be 
so stuck on sitting in the house with their significant other that they just start hating them. Like, no, nah, do stuff with each other. Like, yeah, for real. Have, you can go outside. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you can go talk, outside. Like, like me and my, like we we go around, we we walk around and stuff, talking. Like, like that's the one thing about man, the whole phone thing and stuff. Like, you be in relationship with somebody and don't even know who they are because y'all not even having that communication. You feel me? True. Like, like, like I know a couple times. Like, I'm like, hey man, put the goddamn phone down, <laughs> <laughs> and let's just go ahead yeah. and enjoy this movie or whatever we doing, man. Yeah, so thanks, man. How, thanks. how did how did y'all and you know how did you you guys meet? Like, did she work for the radio station? She worked for um for uh she used to work for um iHeartRadio mm -hmm. out in uh out in the Bay. Okay. And um one of my teammates went out there for an interview. A few of my teammates went out there for an interview, yeah. and um he was our matchmaker. So what he did was like, yo, boy. So check out here, this girl, hella fine, uh, but she's definitely your type. So I slid yeah. in the DM. You know oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. It's been history ever since. Though I don't think we have we we haven't had a time where we didn't connect. Yeah, you know I mean, and that's one thing. That's that's rare to find something like that so Man. quick. You know I mean, we understand each other, we get each other. I mean, we have our ups and downs, but I mean, we have more ups and downs than anything. You know what I mean, yeah. and that's what it's all about: growing and growing with each other. And growing with growing going through everything together. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Do. Yeah, man. Because like I said, with my fiance, man, with me having a son already in the picture, that can, that yeah. can turn off a lot of girls. You know, same with you. That yeah, can turn off a lot of a lot of people. But with her, that's the thing that I was like, all right, she she the one because not only did she accept me, but she accepted my uh, my son as well. And True. her family was hella cool, and she, she really she don't know nothing about basketball. I teach her everything about it, but she the one who. She the reason why I started coaching because her school was looking for a basketball coach, and she was yeah. on my head about being a coach. And I'm like, I don't know if I could do it. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, let me go yeah. ahead and get uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I did facts. it. I did it. But it's been the best decision I made in my life. I, I have to say, man. Besides, you know, yeah. besides my ki having kids and stuff like that, like coaching is like something I I love doing, bro. Yeah, definitely, man. My girls support me in everything that I do and vice versa. Yeah, yeah I mean, so that's it's all about having a good support system. Yeah. She'll go to stay Warrior fan. So oh. <laughs> Hey yeah, man, I, mean. <laughs> I, I like them. I like I, I like Steph. They on my team, but I, I like them. I like Steph Curry. I like Clay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, know me. Man. I've been I'm, I'm, I'm a LeBron fan. fan. I'm a LeBron fan. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm a LeBron fan now because he on my squad. <laughs> yeah, that's trash. That's a horrible, horrible decision. Man, no. Lakers, man, Lakers is a squad, man. But uh, yeah, they is. With y'all podcast, man. What um, I know you be on a, a couple of shows, or whatever. Like, what what are some things that she talk about? Or does she just have like different guests? She's, on that? she's very my, like my girl is very genuine. She's a very real person. So whenever she do get guests, man, she makes sure they're genuine and we make sure they're real people. Mm -hmm. It's majority of the local artists that be around here or local talent that has a story to tell or somebody who has a story to tell. Like, why go for all these big celebrities and things like that when you got these local people who need to be heard exactly. about certain situations and the people in the area always tune in to everything and yeah. like when she left the, uh when she left the radio station her audience came with her yeah and i mean she got a very good support system yeah. and um that's good to have like if you're a person with a voice use it and that's exactly what she did with the podcast so sure. after she was done with that radio station she took maybe like a few weeks off and got right back to it she's like i want to do a podcast i'm yeah. like bet yeah. do it and then right now that's the thing that's right now was, man. you know radio is popping radio kind of going down and podcast is kind of the new thing anyway yeah, I was I was pumped when she said she wanted to do a podcast. I was it was it was like man, like man. Where, where it, was, it was just so good to hear her voice and yeah. with her um with her with her with her drive and with the things that she wanna do, man, it's just like it's unreal because her, her focal point is helping out people who really need help. Like yeah. it's a guy, um, fat boy chef up here in Seattle. Okay. Food amazing. New Orleans style food. Food is oh, amazing. Oh man, I already know that's good then. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's like little it's like little stuff like that, man. Like the people who's local, the the the, the local small artists and the local talent who needs to be heard. Yeah. She puts them on, like for real, for real. And that's, it's dope. That's, it's hella dope. That's the thing with me, man. I go, I be searching, man, the city for different things. I had entrepreneurs on my show. I had coaches yeah. on my show. I had players. I had um uh one one girl. She got her own business called Detroit Doe. Um, just one guy got his own clothing brand called Black Love is yeah. Power. Like, I just try to make sure, like you say, man, for those voices that, that don't get heard too much, I try to bring you on the show and talk about you. And together, right. we can go ahead and, and build each other up together, both brands. And that's exactly what it's about, man. Yeah. I, she's killing it right now, honestly. She's definitely killing it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Do you ever, like, look at her, like, and maybe, like, with this downtown, be like, man, I should, I could start my own little podcast, or you want to just keep that, that shine on her? 
No, I don't. It, 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 it ain't even about shine or anything. It's just about putting that information out there with her. She knows that like the back of her hand when it comes to radio and broadcasting and things like that. So yeah, that's her. That's her. Yeah, I mean, it ain't no me wanting to do anything. I, if I wanted to podcast, I'd just be like, yo, can I borrow your stuff? Yeah. But I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good off that. For sure. I mean? For sure. I mean, I definitely support her with it and everything like that. And if I do want to get on a podcast, I just be like, yo, babe, let's do a podcast. She'd be like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, we talk about crazy stuff, man. Hey, like, man, especially with Hopefully, you- look, today we're going to do one, bro. That hopefully, we're going to, hopefully, we do one today and then tomorrow that come out. But crazy story about a guy who didn't know what the coronavirus was yesterday. <laughs> No. We, was at the grocery store. we was at a grocery store and this guy was like, man, the, what's going on outside? Why are y'all, y'all wearing these masks? No. Like, this fool what? must have been in the basement like with no type of Wi-Fi or nothing, man. Man, now that he could out work, he goes straight to the bathroom and lock the door probably. <laughs> like, know if, you don't know, if you don't know what's going on, something's wrong, for real. Yeah, but it's just stuff like that. I mean, we try to she, like she 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 definitely try to keep the traction on her page with, with with stories and stuff like that, fun times and stuff. But more so informal things with everybody and what's going on in the city. Yeah. I mean, to see so. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Like I said, I had uh, I watched a couple of clips. I'm about to um, go ahead and um and watch some whole episodes. I was watching some clips on her page one day when you had posted something. It was like yeah, yeah. It, seemed, it seemed like it's uh it's pretty good. And y'all got that at the crib, so it's easy access. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely. Wake up. Hey, bet. come on. Do y'all still have guests coming over even though y'all are going through? Yeah, yeah. That, we make sure they go. We ask them, like, you good? They be like, yeah, you good? <laughs> yeah, so that pretty much be the conversation. Hit them with some hands on the time before they sit down. Hey, <laughs> hey, I swear to God, man, I was in the studio Um, when this first <laughs> happened. My man greeted us at the door with, with Lysol wipes and spray, dog. That's how you got to be, man. That's how you got to be. That's man, how you got to be, man. Just keep yourself safe. Yeah, and like I said, she ain't having one guest, so it's not like, you know what I'm saying, you're inviting a million people at the house, so. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true, man. Yeah. yeah, man. So uh, with the um with the, with the podcast, man, we usually do this thing, man, called Top 5. I mean, not Top 5, Top 3. Okay. So I give you a, a subject, you give me your Top 3, man. So Top 3 Childhood Crushes. Childhood Crushes? Yeah. I got to go one, Gabrielle Union. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Angelina Jolie. Okay. Um, man. Mm, probably a Shanti or something like that. Not bad choice at all. <laughs> no, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. 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 Hey, my my, I got the what's name in there too, man. I agree with everyone, but I like uh old school Jason's lyric, um, Jay Pickett. Okay. Man, that was my the girl, boy. But uh, Fox Brains, I see you. Give me top, <laughs> yo, top three, um, top three TV shows. You know, man, oh, man. It could be current. It could be all time. Man, Martin. Okay. Um, Wayne's Brothers, yeah. Fresh Prince. All right, bad, bad. Top three movies. Honorable mention, Jamie Foxx too. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jamie Foxx is straight. Top three movies. Oh, Friday, Friday the next. <laughs> 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 Friday, Friday the next. Uh, uh, let's go. No, nah, no, nah, I say Friday, Harlem Nights, and Life. Okay, damn, that's, that's good choices right there, man. Yeah. Top, top three uh foods. Top three foods, man. Once anything, my girl cooks. She's okay. amazing. Like, how, how how important is that when you uh with somebody that they can cook? Oh, she she's definitely the top chef in the, in the relationship and in the career. Yeah. But um, for for us, it's like we we. we she she definitely take that. She definitely take the lead on that. But okay. having somebody that can cook, man, is definitely dope. Um, but top three foods. Yeah. Um, uh, oof, that's tough, man. I'm a foodie. Man. Salmon steak and uh, dang. Salmon steak. That's good. Yeah, that's, that, that's that's French good. fries. Duh. Everybody who I ask that question, French fries is always on our list, bro. Yeah, I get French fries all day long. Definitely. Okay, and um, yeah. top three. Uh, we're gonna do two more. We're gonna do top three hoopers and then top three rappers. Top three hoopers of all time. Uh, yo, 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 top three. Um, probably LeBron. Okay. Uh, MJ, of course. Okay. Um. Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is a dog, boy. Dog. Yep. And, your, and, your, and your top three rappers. Top three rappers? Yeah. Man. Gotta go Meek, Hove, 
พี่ดินหน้าอ I gotta go meet whole uh, probably Wayne. All right, all right, bet, bet. And uh, why, why we, why we talking about uh, you know, saying got the Corona stuff, man. Hypothetically, like if they said you're on lockdown, you can't leave the house, not even for groceries or nothing. You got 24 hours to get what you gotta get. And this, this your top five things during the Corona season. Five albums you would have to have during the Corona time if you locked down the house. Five albums. Yeah, you could just have five albums. Um, DMX, if it, uh, when is double say? Is it when is dark? Hell is hot. Yeah. Hot boys, guerrilla warfare. Okay. Um, uh, juvenile, four hundred degrees. Okay. Uh, newer artists, well, newer version R and B, probably go Sam Smith. Okay. Um, and the Lonely Hour, that album. Oh and, yeah. Um, got had R and B with you and your girl. <laughs> got to, got to put Sam Smith in there. Um, ooh. What's another one? What's another one? What's another one? Uh, man, that's tough. That's tough. We we can go with them four. Probably, probably Tupac. Two. Probably Tupac. All eyes on me. All right, all right. Now this this is the uh, top five things you need in the crib. Like when it come like water, tissue, yeah. stuff like that. So I'm gonna go water for sure. Well, no. I, I'm good with water. I drink tap water. Yeah, I'm about to say, uh, yeah, you can get the faucet real quick. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got to go uh, uh, canned goods for sure. Yep, got to. Um, uh, toilet paper. Yep, they've been going crazy with that. <laughs> yeah, they've been uh, crazy, crazy with that. The canned goods for sure, toilet paper. I got to have ice cream. I got to have brownies. Um, And, dang. Tuna. Tuna. All right. Now, this is the last yeah. one, man. This is a crazy one, man. You can only right. talk to five people outside your household. Who's those five people? I don't know. My grandma, my daughter. Uh, man. <laughs> man, I'm too nervous to talk to the house of my grandma. <laughs> my hey, grandma, my, grandma, my, my daughter. Wait, my grandma, my daughter, probably my little brother, Deontay. Yeah. Probably my other older brother, Victor. And um, man, probably my older brother in jail too. Okay, okay. So okay, I keep it all family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I usually, I know you got kids that follow you, so I'm not gonna ask this question, man. Usually, I end every podcast off with a high moment or a jump moment, but I'm not gonna put you out there like that. But okay, I'm, I'm gonna do a story time, man. Like, do you remember? It was this one time, dog. When you when you when you was ponytail wheel, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and we were driving from Eastland. You had your mom car, the red one. And yeah, we got pulled over. Yes, dog. <laughs> I already knew you about to say that. And we got out of the car. We was right on eight mile, right on grass and eight mile on the other side on Roseville. You was and you you was so. <laughs> yo, but you no was no way. It was weeds. That was yeah. yeah, and you was pissed you, at me because I'm in that boy laughing you my ass dying laughing. I'm like, yo, the, shut up. The, <laughs> I think the police thought I was probably high or drunk, bro. Yeah. Like, dog, he has on that. I'm, we was on that hotel, <laughs> stressed out in that hotel building, dog. <laughs> I remember that. I and yeah, I'm like, that. dog. Yeah. Like, it, it, like, and that's another thing. We used to go to the mall, bro. Broke. Facts. We just walking around. We catch the bus, and if somebody had enough to eat some food, that was a good day for you. Yeah, let's go to the mall. Dog, yeah, let's go. Cause we used to go. Oh, eat, really eat some, right. I remember that time. I think you went with us. We caught the bus to uh, Fairlane, trying to change it up. Like man, like just those, like those days, man. I think about that and tell my son that junk all the time. Like those broke days, man. Like you be like, man, like yeah. You, but you, that's what you need it, man. But you, you be like, man, you made it. Like if you can make it through those days, you can make it through anything, bro. Facts. My mom's probably making eighteen thousand a year, like. <laughs> And making I, it work though. And I had everything I wanted because remember she worked yep. at Mary Grove when you was going there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, because she was clean. Like, yeah, guess what I ran into? I'm like, who? Like, I will up here. I'm like, oh, for real? Yeah, because yeah, she yep. she worked at Mary Grove and stuff, man. Like, you be needing those times, man, to humble you, man. Like, just you know, you know what it can be to start off from the bottom, like at any true. time. Very like, true. Man. Like sometimes I'll be like, man, stressing about stuff. I just think about those times and just be thankful. I got a, a roof above my head. I got a cardigan and a job. Yeah. And, and right now, this coronavirus is really like, it's really showing you, like, man, go sit down. Like, this this guy way, I think, of humbling everybody. And, like, go sit yeah. down and reset. 
I'm teaching them some type of patience or whatever, you know? Yeah, so what, have you been doing more more thinking or sleeping since this stuff happened? I've been working, man. I ain't got time to do either. I've been working, man, trying to get these certifications off the ground. So okay. that's pretty much what I've been doing. Yeah, man. Okay, cool. And now, like I said, I know uh, with IG Live, I think they give you an hour, man, so I don't want to cut, uh, cut us off. But uh, this is going to be on YouTube and stuff for everybody to see and also going to be on all streaming platforms as far as podcasts, you know, Spotify, everything like that. Okay. Cool. So uh, give everybody, like, your, um, your IG information, your Facebook, whatever they can find you, websites. Man, everything, if you're looking for me, man, is going to be Bull Body or Bull Body Project. Um, it's either on Facebook or Instagram. I got a Twitter, uh, Bull Body 84. Um, and that's it, man. That's pretty much it. Just just hit me up. Y'all want to talk to me. Yeah. Easy to reach. So. And, and uh, we're going to end it off on this, man, on some positive stuff. What would be something that Will now would tell Will back when he was 14, 15? What, what, what would be some stuff you would tell him, like, man, you need to do this right or change this up or – what what would be your advice to your young self? Um, get uncomfortable. Don't be scared to go to go try off of them teams. I think that's what it was. Oh yeah. Get uncomfortable and don't don't be scared. Just try. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. All right, man. Well, shoot, man. That's it, man. I appreciate you coming on the live, man. It's my first podcast on the live episode eighteen, man. I got my boy Will, man. Chill. W B B. All right, my dog. All right, man. I appreciate you, man. Holler at you, man. Stay safe. Yes, sir. All right now.